name, so I'm Iga, Iga Olivek. Uh, I'm almost 30, uh, will be 30 in December, so the round number. Um, and I'm an artist, basically, like in a sh very short word, I'm an artist, uh, mostly doing illustration for uh, games, for uh, books, comic books, um, card games. Uh, and so far I've been mostly working in uh, game and animation industry, but now I've quit, kind of, <laughs> let's say. Uh, I quit my daily job um, to, to become a freelancer. Uh, I mean, I've been I've been freelancing for for quite some time already, but in this meantime, I um, I got into studio again, and then I dropped like not drop I quit quit my uh, stable studio job now uh, because because of the burnout. So I had to take a break, like completely break from from any work. And now you got me in this moment that I'm basically trying to come back uh, to to work but very slowly so this is why um like i also don't know how much i can tell you about the digital normal because it's basically i'm i'm pretty much starting uh you know uh but i've been working remotely for now like three or four years now so maybe that is more um you know like a uh better information for you like how i've been able to to do to, to work remotely from 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 anywhere basically because yeah I've been changing the places too uh, and I now like I also moved out completely from from Europe but again like it's been only two weeks <laughs> you know so it's not as as much uh, uh, yet but uh, but yeah whatever I you don't want to know I can I can tell you uh, already what, what what was the uh, nationality Polish yeah I'm from Poland and what's what's what else well, I'd ask <laughs> so you do identify yourself as a digital nomad um now yes pretty much on the start but 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 yes like i don't have a home i would say like i i, I don't have a one stable home i don't know where i will be in one month or two months or what will happen within next month i don't have like a place to go back to i mean except of my family uh uh home but i don't consider it you know as like my place like i used to have home uh, on my own so so this is only like uh you know when i really don't have another place uh, to stay i can of course always go back there but i don't have my own room i don't have like all of my stuff in there like i got rid of almost all the stuff <laughs> now like at the end of last month i was moving out and i had everything like i i have a flat full of you know everything like a big big flat with all the furniture all the stuff that you gather on the way i try to be already minimalist uh you know late, later on the go but still like the, the amount of stuff that you own is, is is huge so so i did the step to like get rid of almost everything okay i i got maybe a couple of boxes with like the most essential uh stuff that i could store at my at my family uh but uh but yeah these are like locked and only thing i got with me now it's basically backpack with my working gear and the suitcase with some clothes and like most essential stuff but basically this is what i have now <laughs> what i what i own and this is where i like wherever i go i i will just follow with this right yeah. Can you tell so, me uh, uh, more about what if, what uh, the those things are like? It's a computer, like a, mm -hmm. what is essential for you? Yeah, so I have a laptop. Uh, I have a graphic tablet to to paint uh, on. It's like like this. I, I have everything here. So this is this is the graphic tablet. It also works as another screen. So so I can also put it uh, as another screen. I connect it to a laptop and I draw on it. Uh, what what else this is the, mo the the most essential uh that i have but uh yeah like mouse it's not it's not it's not too much some external drives for for for, for the files mm. and tons of sketchbooks <laughs> basically because uh because yeah like i i am a digital artist but i'm also a traditional artist so i also have my traditional painting gear with me so it's like this 
I, I, I have everything here with like sketchbook and set of paints as well because I paint planners a lot. Uh, so this is also something I want to integrate more into my um, working, working routine, you know, like this is, this is still something I'm figuring at the moment, like how can I uh, combine my own personal work uh, with, you know, earning money so I don't need to rely solely on commissions because this is, I've been working like that already uh, to do commissions for clients. But the step further for me is to be entirely independent. Uh, so, you know, I don't need to do the work that other people demand from me. I can just create and sell this as, as products. So to be fully independent. But this is, this is a progress. So, so I cannot say I'm fully independent yet because I live mostly off my savings now. Uh, but, but yeah, that's, that's on the, um, I'm working on that. Okay, but uh, as a uh, freelancer, do you have like labor rights or I don't know, some security? Label rights? What, what does it mean? Um, like um, you have to pay um, taxes and you, mm -hmm. you, they guarantee you that like if you get sick, you get the insurance. I mean, yeah. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. So I have my own company in Poland so 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 this is like one person company and uh, I do invoicing like on, on a regular basis like every month I need to do the uh, taxes so so all the taxes are basically happening in Poland so I just all the invoices that I issue so any any money I earn and any money I spend which is on the business expense I collect and then every month uh, my tax advisor is just um, like calculating what are what are the taxes and that also counts for insurance. I also need to pay uh, insurance monthly, uh, but that works only in Poland, in Europe. So so to have insurance while being somewhere else, I need to have external insurance. So I bought like this pack, like insurance for one year and I hope <laughs> I hope it's sufficient. I don't know, but I heard here in Brazil Actually, insurance is for free even for tourists. I'm not sure uh, if that is, yeah. Uh, I hope not to find out. <laughs> but, <laughs> yeah. But uh, but yeah, I mean, at some point, I, I I will have to go to the doctor probably. But but yeah, I don't know if I will stay here. That 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 that's the thing. Like this is the this is the biggest thing about you know being a nomad that you have absolutely no idea what's gonna happen, and that's exciting and scary at the same time. <laughs> I think. And, and how do you choose, like, where are you going next? Uh, yeah, so, um, I don't know, everything is pretty much uh, on the go. So, so for example, I've, did, I've done, um, two months ago, three months ago, I, I've done, like, this two-month traveling trip. Um, but that was just for traveling. It was without working uh, yet, because I wanted to do this break, like, completely, completely disconnect and just enjoy the life, basically. So, so then I, I just bought a ticket to Brazil because uh, I was invited by my friend here, Paula, like I, I told you about. Uh, I don't know if you got in, uh, in contact with her already. Yeah, yeah. I do, yeah. With did you talk? Uh, did you talk not, already or not? Not yet because she's traveling and she was like, I was yeah. traveling too and we couldn't, but we will. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, I, I need to catch up with her as well. Uh, but yeah, like basically, like I uh, I knew that okay, I need to be in Brazil for the time of Carnival because this was the uh, the oh, the, fir the first thing that she was like, yeah, you guys should come uh, for the Carnival in Brazil. So this was like just just one hint of like, okay, I know that I want to go there at this time. Uh, and then I'm building up the whole trip based on like random events, I would say. Uh, so, so for example, um, even before the trip, I I just went to the Instagram and and saw an ad that okay, there there are those horse rides in Morocco on the desert, you know, on, or uh, like a week horse riding camp. I was like, wow, this is something I would love to do. Okay, let me figure if I can combine, you know. So what I did uh, was simply I, I checked what are the connections, like what are the best connections from Europe to Brazil. 
then I saw, uh, okay, I know a person in Madrid that I want to visit. So let me figure out so I can, for example, fly from Madrid so I can visit this person. I can fly through London so I can visit another person. So I would say a lot of plans are also defined by the people I know um, in the world. So so there's always like an anchor, you know, so there, there's always something that I can just... Um, mm have like a reason uh, to go you know so I try to make this these plans uh, this way like if I see the flights are going through there I will most likely choose uh, you know the transfer when I know someone and I can stay for example another day or two uh, you know to to, to, to visit them um, and then like define the plans further so 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 in this case for example what I did uh, I flew through London because I knew a friend in London I flew to London to uh, Morocco for this horse riding camp. Uh, then I spent two weeks in Morocco. Another friend joined because, uh, again, I knew another person in Morocco. <laughs> so, so, so again, like, it's a lot, a lot of connect, connections with people that define that. Yeah. So, so I did this horse riding camp uh, in Morocco. Then I spent a week with other two friends that were in Morocco too. Then I went through Madrid because I knew a person in Madrid to Brazil. And uh, by that time, I didn't know uh, yet what's going to happen further. But a friend of mine already uh, saw that, oh, you're going to be in Brazil. So uh, I am going to travel like no, you're going to be in South America. I'm going to she told me I'm going to travel to Argentina for uh, like some work project. And I'm planning to go to Patagonia. Do you want to join? I'm like. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I do. So, so th this is exactly how how my plan defined, you know, uh, at that time. So, so, so. Okay, so I know I'm gonna stay. That I have a now one month month in Brazil, and then I will go to Argentina because I'm joining that friend on a trip to Patagonia, because it came up randomly, and I decided, okay, this is exactly how I want my plans to be shaped. Just you know, on the go. Mm. And then yeah, within that month, there were also um you know i changed place places in brazil like i for example i went to rio also based on people that i got to know uh already um so yeah for now i, I would say that it's mostly defined by people by other people i hope you don't hear yeah. <laughs> but uh but but that was purely for traveling so i knew that i got two months uh you know limit and i had to go back because I had still a flat. Now I don't have this limit, and now I think I'm mostly limited by by visas um, because you know, like here, uh, you can only stay three months in Brazil. Mm -hmm. And yes, yes, you can stay three months unless you post like the apply for your visa for additional three months. Oh, I oh I don't see you anymore. Thank you. Hello, yeah. I lost you. I, I can hear you, but very barely, but I don't see you either. I, I'm here. <laughs> okay. Now it works. Yeah. You have to apply to visa. Um, yeah. yeah. So, so for example, now, um, now uh, I knew because I stayed already one month. So I think I can stay additional two months at the moment and then I can apply for additional three months. So this is my biggest limitation. I would say, but another one is that when coming to Brazil, I already had to have a flight out, like mm. either flight back or like flight out. So you need to prove that you are gonna leave the country, you know? Um, so I know that at the end of July, so after two months of being here, uh, I already have flight to Colombia. And why Colombia? Uh, well, I just checked what are the possible flights out of uh, Brazil. And it just just chose any like. Oh no! Hello. Yeah. Hello, hello. Mm, the connection. Okay. Yeah. I can. It's back. Back. It, it works. Yeah. Okay. Well, the connection. What's the last thing you hear? The connection to Colombia. Uh yeah. Um yeah. Okay. So why I chose Colombia again? Like uh, because the flight of like being affordable but uh but i also thought like okay who i know in colombia so 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 i have like one contact there 
uh, you know, so I can like, visit. So, but then I don't know, you know, like uh, at the moment, this is also what, what I will have to figure, like what comes next? Um, I don't know <laughs> yet. But like I, I will see. Hmm? It's okay. Yeah. Okay. No, like uh, I, I will have to see. I don't know if it's still here in Brazil when I know how long I'm gonna stay in Colombia, or maybe I just arrived there and then I decide if I if I like it there or not. Or, or I don't know. It might be also. Um, it it also can depend if maybe I I get this uh, extension of visa back so I can be back in Brazil or not. Yeah, like there's a lot of unknown things um that that i will just have to figure on the go and let's see that, um, but do you feel like uh threatened by any border or like immigration policy if i uh, feel what Thre threatened like bad or like, scared of uh no just um no, just just the thing like there is a limitation, right? So you know you cannot stay here forever unless you get married, which I don't plan to. So <laughs> so yeah, I okay, I know this is actually uh, well, it is a problem, of course, because it doesn't allow you to stay as long as you want. So you have to figure stuff on the go. Uh, you have to keep that in mind that you cannot stay in one place forever, um, but but there's also uh, a digital nomad visa here in Brazil and there in in some other countries too so so you can apply for this uh, and have visa for a year for example but i was i was checking uh, the conditions already and i i will have to see if i can qualify because that also you know like digital nomad visa requires you to earn um specific amount of money and you need to um, uh prove that through last three months but for example i wasn't working for for last three months because i had the break so i cannot you know uh show that there are some other ways so maybe uh my, maybe i can figure that that out too but but yeah like coming back to your question it is a limitation of course uh and this is something you need to keep mind all the time like if you can stay in the country or not because if you overstay that is a problem that is a problem so yes and uh, what are your most like expenses? Like, what expenses the, do you have? The biggest, okay. So, so in the general, the biggest is housing and 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 the food and transport. I, I think actually transport because uh, because if you're about to fly, you know, uh, to places, the, the the tickets are one of the most expensive. Then housing, it depends because, for example, now I can stay with someone and I don't have to pay uh, rent. But in general, when I go someone somewhere else, like even you know just for a week somewhere, then of, of course you need to pay for Airbnb or hotel, right? So this is this is expense, and then and then all the basic stuff for living. But this doesn't matter where you live, right? It's gonna be pretty much same that you need you need food you, you will go out eventually to 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 do some stuff especially if you want to travel and and see oh the connection and, uh, especially it. if you will if you're gonna travel to somewhere the uh, yeah, yeah like especially if you want to travel to somewhere then then you will have more expenses like uh like buses or trains you know transport or entries you know to any museums or parks like this is uh these are your expenses but but again like this doesn't matter where you are if you want to do stuff in general like you will you will pay for it like for example i lived in berlin for a couple of years so so if you want to go out in berlin uh you know like you have to pay for everything too right so it's like it doesn't it, it really doesn't matter uh where you live and, and and what is funny it's that actually this life can cost you less you know than than staying in in one place because if the country is cheaper in general you can get for example airbnb i was checking for example in colombia you can get airbnb for the whole month for like two or 300 euro and like, and forget that you will have that in Berlin or like 
you know, any any bigger city in Europe, I would say, like like there's, it's it can be cheaper, you know, living this way than staying in like expensive uh, place for longer. But um, what do you consider as a home? Like what is important to you in a home? In a home? Wait, oh wait, I lost you. One second, one second, one second. Okay, I got you back. Um, what do I consider as home? Yeah. Oh, you mean? <laughs> because you were like always traveling. So what is like um, a home for you? Well, so for so far, it was the place I was always going back to. So it doesn't matter when, when, and for how long, how 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 long you are going, you have a place that you can just be back. And uh, you know, when you're back, you probably shouldn't worry if you can stay there uh, or not, and for how long. So uh, this, but but again, like since this situation is so fresh for me. Um, it's 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 hard to tell because I told you like okay now I don't have home but I technically I do and it's my family uh, home right so if anything happens I know I can always uh, go back there as well and then you don't have to worry of course not for the long term because uh, again like there is no space to, to to stay like long long time but at least you have you know any shelter uh, I would say a home is like a shelter. So it doesn't matter what happens, you know, you can always come back there and, and you don't have to worry about that. Okay. And what is your relationship with the places you visit, like right now in Brazil? How is your relationship with Brazil? A relationship? <laughs> I love it so far. Like this is the this is the thing, like uh, it's not my first time uh, that I that I came here. So like I came back because I was here already and, and, and I really loved it. So, so, okay, I cannot call it my home, uh, at least yet, uh, because it hasn't been too, too, too much time. But, uh, but since I got to know the people, like I, I feel the connection to people more maybe to, than to the place itself. I think it applies everywhere. Uh, like any, anywhere I go, if, if I know people there, it already feels different if it's like a completely mm, new place. But there are some places, no, there are some places in the world as well that, that I, I consider, you know, that I want to go back there because of the, the place. Uh, for, for, because, for example, it's important part of my uh, life and I, um, I connect the events to the place. Yeah. So, but... Uh, but here, I think it's mostly because of people. Yeah. And have you ever experienced any cultural shock? Like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, this is funny because it happens not on daily basis, but uh, but, but quite often here that the maybe not like a shock shock because I think I've 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 traveled to so many places already that there's nothing that would shock me completely because I'm I think I'm I'm already so open that there are so many different you know um, things in the world and people have so many different uh, views opinions mindset that I cannot be just limited to what I think yeah so so I'm very open for you know of what happens around me and instead of like being shocked by that I try to understand why is it normal here and it's not normal for me uh but but there are there are for sure the fireworks no maybe there is a soccer game <laughs> I don't know <laughs> okay um uh oh my god come back to the question uh, 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 what I was at? The cultural shock, like things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so, so there are different, like smaller stuff that I, I, I'm like, what? Really? You do it like this? And, okay. This is. This might be a very 
specific one and not so crucial and important, but but uh, it's an like example of avocado here. <laughs> okay, it was very. <laughs> I don't know if you already know what I'm talking about. Yeah, yes. because we eat it sweet, right? <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And every everywhere else in in Europe. I encountered like eating avocado, you know, in pause, like on the sandwich, egg everywhere, but but the sweet, uh, but in sweet stuff. And when I, you know, uh, when I was introducing this concept here, <laughs> people were like, "What the fuck? <laughs> like, <laughs> no, <laughs> like you don't eat avocado, like with <laughs> sweet stuff." Yeah, 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 yeah. This I already tried, and then I think it's good. So, so I approve avocado in all the different. Uh, forms. I also try to eat it just with the sugar. <laughs> so, so, but this is just 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 a, like a small example. But but I don't know things like traffic, for example, like or I don't know how people are spending time in in general in different uh, places. For example, like more hanging out uh, outside, you know, on the street, or rather like staying at home. It's like in Europe, I think it's most, you know. The streets are more empty, I would say, because you know when you when you have um, like a neighborhood of just houses, you won't see many people in the streets because usually they are just chilling in their homes or in the gardens. But here, for example, like people are hanging out at the streets, so this is this is different. They are just 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 outside, and that's it. Uh, so yeah, yeah, I encounter differences all all the time. But but again, I, I try not to be shocked uh, by them, but I, uh, instead like trying to understand why, you know, why people do this way here and we are doing it differently. And do you identify yourself with any like specific culture? Or I think... Uh, well, I think wanting it or not, I am part of the Polish or European culture, right? Like I was, I was raised like that, and and uh, again, I try not to be limited by this mindset because I think there are a lot of uh, things that I also don't agree uh, with. Uh, so, so okay, I I was born Polish and I had specific concepts. Uh, uh, you know, I, I've learned specific concepts from my family and from my country, but I try to question basically everything and rather follow what I think uh, is best than be limited to culture or, or religion or any any things that you know we were tough by uh, by parents or by society I rather try to question uh, that a lot and and rather rely on my own uh, you know mindset or point of view especially after getting to know so many uh, different cultures as well. And have you ever experienced like xenophobia or racism, racism somewhere? Um, not very much, but but for example, when I was in Kenya, okay, I, I felt different. It's 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 normal when you are on like the only one person looking different in the whole crowd, of course, people will uh, will see you, uh, you know? So, so okay, I experienced how, how it is to, 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 to be different somewhere, but I don't think I can recall a situation that I was literally, um, I don't know, like any bad situation because of my, uh, because of, my race or or religion or or anything like that. I I don't I don't recall. I mean, do you have plans to settle, like resign permanently in somewhere in the future? Yeah, that's that's again like it is question too soon because I've just been settled, <laughs> and this is what I what I got scared of. Uh, this is what I I actually wanted to change that that because i had i had a husband i had a home like you know flat 
I had a dog. I still have a dog. Uh, but and that was something like what you think of being settled is about. Uh, it was like a definition. So I was settled, you know, with with everything. And this is exactly what I what I decided to 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 break because I got I also got scared. Okay, so this is how my life is gonna look like now till the end <laughs> you know so 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 this is maybe too soon to ask like, if i'm gonna settle or not because i have no idea at the moment this is the last thing i want to do to settle like the the at first i want to i want to travel and experience the world in general and try to find what what i really want <laughs> in life uh and then maybe but but yeah i cannot say that at one point I won't settle. Probably I will because, uh, I mean, again, I don't know. I have no idea. I will need to see how this uh, life of being a nomad uh, fits me because maybe it won't. Maybe it's not something I, I'm gonna like, or maybe it's not gonna be comfortable at all. Or, yeah, I will have to. I will have to see that. But yeah, I never say never. I, I, I can either stay like this forever or I can either, I don't know, be back in three months and and decide, okay, this is not for me and, you know, let me go back to everything that I had before. I don't know. But what would you consider if you were planning to settle? If I'm what? planning to settle? Like, well, you... to where and... And how? If you were, yeah, if you were planning to settle, what would you take in consideration? Like, mm -hmm. what do you think about to choose a place to to fix? Yeah, so to so definitely a place itself. If I like the surroundings, if I don't know, even even stuff like weather. Like for me, sun is super important, and what was really was like destroying me in in Europe was the cold and the winter so I'm really not a you know winter person even though I was born there mm, so if I want to settle I think I, I, I would really like to be in some warmer place with a lot of nature uh, but then also the connections uh, like people because okay I, I think like you can make connections everywhere uh, you go but then I would need to feel comfortable you know uh, with people around because I can be on my own I'm fine being on my own but not for too long uh, I, I, I've i never experienced feeling being alone for for too long so I need to be surrounded uh, by people so so this is another important aspect um, yeah or probably also like social uh, security system in, in general uh, stuff like yeah insurance if you have um, you know, access to, to, to all the hospitalities. Like, this is a bureaucracy, another thing. <laughs> I don't know how much you can hear <laughs> stuff, but it's getting loud sometimes. <laughs> it's okay, I was missing that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's different. Like, the, the, yeah. it's about differences as well. Like, I, I think he, here the noise and sound doesn't affect people as much as as in Europe there's no such thing as silent silent hours I think yeah <laughs> at night yeah uh, uh, yeah so even bureaucracy like for for example like uh, because I was immigrant in Berlin for 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 four years or something uh, and uh, the fact that I uh, couldn't speak language even though I, I I learned I was trying to I never got to speak German as I would uh, like to. And that was sometimes an obstacle with all the bureaucracy stuff that for me was so hectic, like uh, dragging my energy every every time that I'm just not sure if I would like to settle there because of that, you know, because of all the bureaucracy and all the stuff that needs to be sent by post or fax, uh, you know. So, but, but again, like, for example, at the moment, I, I don't know or i don't see the place which would actually fit uh you know those needs like i i haven't yet lived anywhere that i thought okay this is this is the place i could actually settle maybe that's why i'm also 
I feel the need to to travel and, and search because I, I haven't yet found a place that I would actually feel as comfortable that, okay, this is the place I can settle. But maybe there is no such place. Maybe Maybe that's it. Maybe that's why I need to, you know, like still be on the go and like try to live in different different places and what inspired you to start to live in this life like where did you find the information and uh i think internet in general because uh i mean well first thing it was just my uh my desire to travel in general so so this is this is this is really connected uh and that i got to already live in different places so 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 since i got to experience that already i know how it is and i and i know that i want to experience more of it uh so this is the 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 first thing because maybe if i didn't get to travel at all maybe i would feel comfortable you know uh at home but since since i know this life is possible and this i can also see in social media on youtube you know internet like how other people Uh, do that as well. I get inspired by that too. So, um, so, so I, I really like, you know, to see like how, what, what I can do better, you know, like for for myself to feel better, like to new things to try. Uh, I'm getting inspired a lot by other people. And how many countries have you visited, and how many countries oh, do you plan to visit? Oh my God. I don't know exact number. I think I was searching, like I was counting at one point and it was like, I had 20 something countries visited. Uh, but in terms of plan, I, yeah, I, I would like to see as many, of, of course. Uh, like I just, I just want to uh, travel the world and see as many places as possible. But not exactly to just tick off the, the countries itself, but just for the sake of experiences. Uh, you know, but it's always <laughs> for sure. It's always like nice when you you can you know like be like okay, I was in this country. But for example, let's even see Brazil. It's so big. It's like I I don't think I can tick off like okay, I was in Brazil. Don't know. I was in the tiny part of uh, Brazil only. I haven't been to. Uh... Oh no, the connection oh, again. No, I haven't oh. been to. <laughs> Amazon. Uh, that's only one yeah. word then. To, to Amazon uh, forest or the northern uh, part at all. Like for example, there's this desert, uh, you know, the dunes. Yeah. Um, Not that easy. I also would. Yeah, I also would like to go there and to just some other places. So, so, so that's the thing. Like, okay, you can, you can see so you've been to this country, but you haven't been to all the places that this country has to offer, right? So like you, you can also say I've been to Europe, but oh my God, like Europe has so many, you know, different countries and places, but it's in the yeah. scale, it's the same, right? As as Brazil. So, so, so yeah, I want to see, I just want to see as much different stuff uh, as possible and get to know, uh, you know, the, the, the cultures. Yeah. And can you explain me a little bit uh, more about uh, the thing you were saying that it's cheaper to like live in Colombia or like in Brazil because of the Airbnb than to be settled in your country. Ah, um, well, so this is this is just applies this just applies to general cost of living, you know, in the country. So for example, a rent in London will cost you way way more than uh, rent in I don't know even in some uh, city in Poland. Uh, right and then from country to country country it varies a lot and it, that depends on the o economical situation so for example argentina like look how how economical situation has changed there the inflation everything so uh it is in general cheaper uh, you know is it good not in general not but for people who want to come there yes because it's cheaper right uh so 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 this is exactly the thing like from country to country Uh, that all depends uh, on the economical situation and how much your life costs there versus other countries. So that so that's why I thought like yeah, the, this traveling way can be cheaper, but only if you go to those places that are actually cheaper. For example, you can go to Asia, like Thailand. 
for example. This is this, it's also cheaper than Norway, let's say. Uh, all right. So so yeah, when you when you when you settle, um, like okay, maybe this is also an important aspect. If you uh, earn money uh, remotely, right? So then that applies to you when when you when you live when you when you travel to but if you work in the country that you live in then you don't really have much choice right because if the country like if, if the um, if the cost of living in a country is high but you also earn money there that shouldn't really affect you this much because you will also earn a lot uh, right and the same goes to 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 a country which cost of living is cheaper you will earn way less you know by working there but you will also spend less but working remotely like you will earn more or less the same amount of money of course it depends depends how you earn it uh but but basically what what you do you will earn a specific amount of money and then how much you spend that already uh you know depends on the on the on the place you are in that's why it's in general probably better to just choose places which are a little bit lower cost because then you can you don't have to work maybe as much right because it also depends if you have like a, a salary monthly salary coming in or you just only earn depends on how much you you work right so this is like for me this is also been i think that i um i was rethinking like how much we should actually be working and if this system of eight hours a day is good to me no <laughs> you know uh that's why i would rather now look like the cost of living versus uh you know the earnings and then how much you know i need to thrive in general but not just to earn 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 just because you know but that's that's the the burnout affected me a lot in this case because i used to work all the time like crazy uh, and now i reconsider it a little bit uh, what do you think the world would be if more people had like your lifestyle like oh that's philosophical <laughs> question <laughs> yeah. uh, i think it would be a little bit better place i think people would have a little bit more understanding towards each other because i think if you are too much limited in your bubble uh then it's very easy to hate you know people who have different uh mindset than you um so i think I think if more people got to, you know, travel, experience and meet different cultures and trying to understand them, then then it would be a little bit better. But this is highly hypothetic and maybe not. <laughs> I don't know.